Today, we're going to Zanzibar off the coast of Tanzania with a bunch of Academy scientists and with Cristina Castillo, who makes sure that everyone and everything gets there safely. A lot of what I do involves expedition planning mm. and sometimes that involves getting a lot of gear and sampling equipment to a small island. Zanzibar was a really exciting trip. First, we were in transit for about 30 hours just to get there. Ooh. So the first thing that we did when we got there was unpack the snorkels and the fins and get in the water. What were some of the biggest surprises for you on the recent trip? I think for me, the biggest surprise was just realizing that the natural world continues to surprise us. Even in shallow water, there are things that if we just take a little bit of a closer look, we'll find something that surprises us. Surprises like sea biscuits and nudibranchs. Sea biscuits are a marine animal. They're closely related to sand dollars, also urchins and starfish. They're actually also fairly closely related to humans. So fun fact is they are your relative. See the resemblance? Nudibranchs are a type of sea slug. I think when I first saw them, I thought, oh, they're too weird and cool to study. Like I should study something practical like fish. <laughs> Specifically, I'm interested in nudibranchs that live on corals because they don't just live on the coral, they eat coral too. And so they have this really close relationship with the coral that they're on and they've actually adapted camouflage to look like the coral. So like they've really taken the you are what you eat thing <laughs> seriously. <laughs> it leads to nudibranchs that live on these corals being pretty isolated from nudibranchs that live on other corals, which an isolation is a key factor that leads to new species evolving. And that's what Allison is trying to understand with this nudibranch. Are they all one species or seven different species? So Allison, what did you find? Well, I'm especially excited about this specimen. Once you've sequenced DNA, you can compare to everything else that you've sequenced and cluster things into species that all look pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Now that we know genetically what this one looks like, we can figure out which of the others need new names because they don't belong to this group anymore. The reason we care about the number of species in a given area is because it indicates kind of the richness of that ecosystem. I love the fact that there are so many different species on Earth, and I think that whatever we can do to understand them and ultimately protect them, we should do. I actually wasn't sure if we would find any sea biscuits or sand dollars in Zanzibar. So Francis did a little reconnaissance when they got to the island. She visited a dive shop. When we showed them the picture of the sand dollar, no one had seen one. So that was a little scary. And these animals bury themselves in the sand. Not exactly easy to spot, but Francis was able to follow their tracks. We did end up actually finding one species of sand dollar and one species of sea biscuit. I'm using specimens in the Academy's collections to see if I can use holes in adult sand dollars and sea biscuits to predict what size egg that species produces. The larger the egg, the larger the larva. That means that the larva will settle quickly and become an adult. The opposite is true too, and since smaller larvae take longer to settle, they travel in the water column, often settling much farther away from where they started. Like Allison's research, this ability to settle near or far can also affect speciation. From the model I've been working on, one of these species I expected to have a very small egg, and one of them I expected to have a very large egg. It turns out that they did have the egg sizes I predicted based on my model. And that's good news for her model. She can now use it on fossil specimens to understand the drivers of extinction. And the DEEP team came back with some exciting discoveries too. The Indian Ocean in general is the least explored area in the world. We were the first team to go and explore those deeper reefs in Zanzibar. We had to cancel four dives because the currents were too strong. I think that's part of exploration. Sometimes you find a lot of things, but other times you, you don't. We still found one new species of fish. So what does a trip like this tell us about the natural world? I think it just tells us that there is so much out there that we still don't know, and there's so much more to be discovered. And I think it really highlights the importance of protecting these environments and protecting these spaces for future generations.